Welcome to the Faith Matters Podcast. In this candid conversation with Dr. Valerie Hudson, we explore several questions. What is our relationship with Heavenly Mother? In what sense do women exude priesthood power? What role, if any, does patriarchy have in a marriage? And what is women's unique role in our faith and the theology of embodiment? Valerie is a distinguished professor of international relations at Texas A&M University and an influential writer and thinker in the Latter-day Saint community. Valerie is viewed by many feminists as a defender of traditional gender roles, but she shows in this conversation why she defies categorization as she argues for a very distinct feminism rooted in her Latter-day Saint theology and experience. We offer this episode as a window into the kinds of conversations happening broadly among women in the church today. Okay, so my name is Aubrey Chavez. I'm with the Faith Matters Foundation, and we're here with Valerie Hudson, who is a university distinguished professor at um, Texas A&M and inside the church, probably known for um, her book, Women in Eternity, Women in Zion. And then I also have Lindsay Broadbent and um, Cami Frost, and we're here to just have a discussion about women and all things women in the church, um, and I think that's it. So, so maybe, Valerie, we can start with... Um, I've, I've heard you mention a, a quote by Confucius that I really love, and I think maybe this is a really good place to begin. Um, it's about language, and he says that our language must be correct because if, our, if what we said is not what we meant, then what we meant was not said, and what should be done is left undone. So can we start with that and insert priesthood? And how do you think the priesthood and the words that we use, the language that we use around priesthood, in the church may be inadequate, and, and specifically in ways that affect women? Well, I think uh, priesthood is one of those um, key words that uh, have um, caused mischief in the church. Priesthood, polygamy, patriarchy, patriarchal order, I think all of those um, have some issues. They're too easily infected with um, the traditions of the fathers that considered women to be lesser than than men. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so um, when I was a new convert to the church, you know, it seemed pretty clear that, you know, men had this power. In fact, priesthood was defined as um, uh, acting the power and authority of God. And women had nothing. Uh, So uh, I think for a long time, the notion that um, women have power, mm-hmm. that women preside over certain ordinances in the plan of happiness, and that men do not hold the power and authority of God, but they may act in the power and authority of Heavenly Father, and their sisters mm-hmm. in the Gospel are acting with the power and authority of Heavenly Mother, I think has been um, in need of, of, as Maxine Hanks calls it, excavation. Yeah, that's so interesting. There's a, you're distinguishing between God, which sort of implies this unity between Heavenly Father and Mother, and Heavenly Father, that men are acting for Heavenly Father, and, and women are acting for Heavenly Mother. How could it be otherwise? Yeah. Certainly yeah. the men are not acting for <laughs> Heavenly Mother, are they? Yeah, yeah right. So in what ways do you see in the church or just in life that women are are acting for Heavenly Mother? Well, you're all mothers. How do you see it? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I certainly see it in motherhood. You know, bring, like bringing a, a spirit into this world feels like, an, an appre- like as you say, an, an apprenticeship to Heavenly Mother. But... I think that gets a little messy for me. <laughs> like, I'd like to feel like there's something after that, you know, or, or if that is an opportunity that wasn't available to me, it, how else can I, can I experience that apprenticeship mm-hmm. outside, of, outside of birth? And Biological motherhood is simply one exquisite manifestation yeah. of motherhood. And I think there have been a number of general authorities and other people, such as Sherry Dew, mm. who have articulated sort of the broader power of motherhood. Uh, but certainly yeah. if you had the chance to legally and lawfully be a mother, 
Mm. Um, you know, I, I would imagine that our Heavenly Parents would want you to take that chance. It's neat because she's always been there. It's just that I haven't had the language or the freedom I felt to talk to, to talk about her or discover her or fill her. And yet, I have beautiful mothers all around me that have taught me how to be a mother. And, and so I feel grateful. I feel really grateful. And yet, I feel like I want to start creating a language where it's safe to talk about Heavenly Mother. That it, she is sacred. And yet, we need to speak about her. We, I, I feel like we all depend on it, not just me. Mm. I think that's why listening to your, or watching your video um, about the two trees, you said, and I keep thinking about this, you said, until her daughters become the producers of knowledge, she may remain hidden. And you also said, we need to know her, we need to understand her power and her authority. And I had a similar experience where I received a blessing. And um, in the blessing it said, if you want to connect to your divine, to your divinity, you have to see yourself as Heavenly Mother sees you. And in that moment, it, I was washed over with the, just this mm -hmm. feeling of acceptance. And the feeling of unworthiness dissipated. Wow. And it was just this amazing experience that I could see myself the way she saw me. And then I had the same experience afterwards. I was just frustrated with myself that I was waiting. It was like I was waiting um, for permission <laughs> to talk to her and to pray mm -hmm. to her. And I was also waiting for um, kind of the church men, right, to tell me <laughs> who she yeah, was yeah. and what her characteristics were. And um, and that's not how it's going to happen, is it? And I don't think so. I don't no, think so. Be really and wrong, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. But then I also would. would love mm -hmm. perspective on this because um, my daughter can watch me figure this out, right? She can watch me develop this relationship with Heavenly Mother, and I can teach her this. But she's also growing up in this wonderful church, but it's run by men, right? And they're the ones asking the questions and giving us the answers. And you hear all the time, well, did the brethren say that? You know, mm -hmm. like it's always like we are deferring to the brethren. And it's not that I don't trust them for knowledge, but they wouldn't ask the same questions that we would ask. And they mm -hmm. don't view things in the same lens as mm -hmm. women view things. And so maybe I'm getting off topic, but I was just wondering like what we could do as a church to to change that, to get more of a woman's perspective in the church. Yeah. Because even in the video I watched that you did, you cited three people to kind of back up that we were worth that we were worth the same as men, and they, it was from men, right? And the, and that's due to that we aren't creating women aren't creating our own knowledge, mm -hmm. but can we? I guess that's the question: Can we in the church? And or how? Is that what it would? How and how? How can? How do we, we go about doing that in a in the spirit, right? What do you think about that? Oh, well, for years I've suggested that women need to create their own language. Mm -hmm. um, there are things that women feel that no man has ever felt. Yeah. All right? How you feel when you hold, bring that baby close and your breasts fill with milk. No man has experienced that. We need a word for that. We also, you know, there are plenty of other experiences I think that women have that are related to their bodies, especially, but also related to their unique position in the family mm -hmm. that I, I think are absolutely um, worthy of having names. Mm -hmm. And yet we women have been mute. We have waited for men to name our experiences. And of course, since they don't know our experiences, they're never going to, name, never them. Going to name them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And do you think um, maybe this, I, I love the idea that at the very core of our doctrine that we really believe in equality. So do you think that our misunderstanding or our, our loss of Heavenly Mother, I feel like it's a lot, I, I feel like it's a loss in the sense that we just don't talk about her. We have this understanding that she, it's too, it's too special, like you said, and we, mm -hmm. we just, we, she's not in lessons and occasionally in Oh My Father, the song, and, and it, that just feels like nothing to me usually. And so do you think that that is just um, 
cultural, it, it, that it was that the restoration was was born out of this very like patriarchal in the in the most worldly sense of the word society, and we've just sort of let that continue. Or, or what do you? Yeah, is it just a is it just tradition, or, or how how did we lose? Well, I think there's, you know, I think there's a number of things to be said about that. One is you've got to remember that the church came forth in the Americas of the, Mm. you know, early 1800s. And oh, my gosh. (laughs) Um, I mean, there were some respects in which America was actually a little bit ahead of the curve. For example, women in New Jersey could hold property in their own name before the Constitution Mm. deprived them of that right. (laughs) So... You know, I mean, I guess you could argue um, if, if if Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother were looking over the entire world in 1830, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe you'd pick America as the place where their daughters mm-hmm. were treated or had mm-hmm. the potential to be treated uh, or have the most rights. But it was a deeply patriarchal culture nonetheless. Yeah. So I think I think it's kind of mixed, but I think we're coming to an age where the loss, or at least the hiddenness of our Heavenly Mother, hurts us very, Mm. very badly. Um, For example, um, we talk about, uh, uh, or at least my my colleague Ralph Hancock talks about the natural family, a man and a woman and children, right? Mm. Well, to the extent that we hide Heavenly Mother, we don't have a natural family. And, and how do you defend the natural family unless you have a natural family to pattern your family after, which is yeah. the divine family? Yeah. How do you have good marriages if Heavenly Mother is off in the shadows somewhere right. and you have no idea what her relationship with Heavenly Father or even her own son is, right? Yeah. Because Jesus is as much Heavenly Mother's son mm-hmm. yes. all right, as he is mm-hmm. Mary's son. Yeah. All right. So in all of these things, I think the church is probably, I hope the church is probably beginning to realize that without her, it doesn't make any sense. Right. Mm. The plan of salvation doesn't make any sense. And our divine destiny remains obscure. And Mm. how can we reach Zion? How can we become a Zion society Mm. without understanding how women are to be treated and what their power is? and how they are not simply biological instruments to build up someone's priesthood kingdom, which is a quote that somebody actually gave me once. <laughs> that's who women were in the plan of salvation. Wow. Yeah. So what does that actually look like? I, I mean, I love the idea of language. Like, we need a real word to describe these things that a, a man has never experienced. Mm-hmm. But, but what else within the church can we do to make Heavenly Mother more visible without seeming to be too radical. I hate that radical is the word that comes to mind, but I feel like it, I'm breaking rules by talking about her at um, church. Well, you know, I think you shouldn't ask yourself why you feel that way. Mm-hmm. And once you have an answer, I think you should take it all and throw it right in the trash can. <laughs> because the only way this is going to happen is not when a man comes to you and mm-hmm. says, yeah. Lindsay, it's okay by me if you talk about Heavenly Mother. You know, it is, it's got to yeah. be we women... Mm. as the rushing waters of the Mississippi talking about Heavenly Mother and refusing to shut up. Yeah. Yeah. It's wow. teaching our daughters who their mother in heaven is. Mm-hmm. It's patterning our marriage over how we believe the marriage between Heavenly Mother and Heavenly Father are. It's teaching how incredible Eve is, Mm. that she really was the bravest and most faithful of all women. In fact, one of my daughters is named Eve for that very reason. Yeah. So it's time to create new traditions. Yeah. Right? It's time to question the silence about Heavenly Mother. Right? Mm -hmm. And and I've simply said to, to people, look, there's absolutely nothing that says that we can't talk about her. There is yeah. no doctrine that says that we can't talk about her. Or to and her. Then, and to her. Well, and, and uh, you know, w- President Hinckley said we shouldn't pray to her. So I say, dear Heavenly Father, and I know Heavenly <laughs> Mother is right by you, so I'd like to talk to both of you. Right? So, you know, yeah. it's, I think it's important to suggest that... It, it's critical for women to have yes. a relationship with their mother. Mm-hmm. Who are they patterning their lives after? Who, who are they yeah. trying to be like one day? Yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. they've got to have something. Otherwise, you feel 
lost, mm -hmm. right? You feel mm -hmm. lost, as if, as if the women really aren't a major part yeah. of the plan of ha the great plan of happiness that goes on yeah. forever and ever and ever. Right, and just acknowledging that that is that it's there, that it's in our theology. That you know, I think that's, that's right. a gem of our that's right. Mormonism mm -hmm. that we believe in this this union. We have the most revolutionary and feminist doctrine yeah. of any religion on the face of the earth. Yeah, and what we've done with it is simply pathetic. <laughs> You know, in terms yeah. of bringing Heavenly Mother to light, yeah. bringing the power mm -hmm. of her daughters to light, mm -hmm. making yeah. sure that the voice of women is heard. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about who are considered to be kind of, you know, the public intellectuals, right, yeah. who write deep books about Mormon doctrine. Aren't they mostly men? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what prevents us from writing deep, thoughtful books about Mormon theology? Why isn't one of us writing a book on the oh. theology of the body? So what other things can change, do you feel like, in the church to help, you know, voice women? Well, we've talked about some of the, the things that we need to do, like, you know, changing the names of women's positions and young mm -hmm. women's theme and things like that. But the one thing that would break it all open mm -hmm. is when you allow a living woman to be sealed to more than one man. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So much heartache, so much sorrow, mm -hmm. so many tears, yeah. so many yeah. feelings of how is it that women even live in the celestial kingdom. Yeah. Right? The minute, I mean, we currently allow dead women to be sealed to mm -hmm. more than one man, yeah. Yeah. but we don't allow live but, women mm -hmm. to be sealed to more than And it's implied that they'll man. choose, right? It's implied that, that they'll choose. Yeah. There's this right. imperative. Yeah. There's a, but it's implied. It'll all work it's yeah. not doctrine. Okay, yeah. It'll all work it's out. not doctrine. Yeah. It's a that teaching. But, right. I mean, if we're so comfortable saying that it, it, it will work out, like, why not just, why not let, let women have, have that here yeah. for, mm -hmm. for peace right now? Mm -hmm. Right? I think that that opens it all up in a way it that does. that yeah. would be so healing for women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, and, I love the yeah. energy of... We don't know everything, mm -hmm. but it's going to be okay. Yeah. We know there's a loving, mm -hmm. trusting father and mother mm -hmm. in heaven, right? Yeah. And they're mm -hmm. in charge, and it's going to be okay. Yeah. Oh, that's, so I do yeah, love that. Yeah, that yeah. would be huge. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm waiting for that. I'm hoping that will happen in my lifetime. Yeah. 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 So those are your big ones. Any other... Any other changes like that that you think oh, yeah. we can do? Oh yeah, in fact, I came Sunday. up with an entire list. <laughs> oh really? So you'll have <laughs> Is this to something we can link to. Do you That's have this? That's right. List? Yeah, uh, I will give you the link. There's okay. a whole, <laughs> I think, Square Two uh, on okay. our, our website, Square Two. We have an entire list of what we think yeah. has got to happen for us to move towards a Zion society mm -hmm. to realize the co-presidency of men and women. But I yeah. think it's also critical that that these changes be made so that we empower our women. Yeah. I really think mm -hmm. the forces of darkness have aimed their arrows mm -hmm. directly at mm -hmm. women and that unless women know who they are and know their power yeah. and gain their voice, take their voice, right, then I think that um, you know women are going to by and large be the great casualties That's of funny. some of the ideological battles of the 21st century. Wow, yeah. Maybe to sum up, I, I mean, I think I, I, hopefully we've touched on most of these, but will you, will you give us your reasons why you should be a Mormon if you're a woman? You know, what are the gems in our religion that, that should keep you here and that should really feed your soul and, and help you feel valued as a woman? Well, it's, it's clearly our doctrine, mm -hmm. all right? We believe revolutionary things that no other faith especially no other Judeo-Christian faith believes. We believe that we have a mother in heaven who is a co-equal with Heavenly Father, who is as powerful, as divine, as wise as he is. Yeah. Uh, we believe that Eve did not sin in the Garden of Eden, but rather she should be praised for what she did and that she was foreordained to open the door to this world. Right? From the foundation of this world, it, no man could open the door to this world. Only a woman could. Yeah. And that she was incredibly courageous, knowing what surely she knew, even in, in, a, in a vague way, how badly women would be treated in the fallen world. Uh, I, you know, I think also we, we, we teach it, that uh, the fall was fortunate. We teach also that uh, women... 
um, yeah, I think it's part of our doctrine that women p play an incredible role in the plan of happiness. You can't even have the plan of happiness without women. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and sort of resuscitating all of that, excavating it, seeing it for what it is, right, is our task as women in this faith, mm -hmm. right? That's our task. No man can do that. Now, it is true that there are some men who will only listen to men. And so I think sometimes that is why mm. the Lord has a male spokesperson, because the women will listen to the man, and the mm. men who are not prepared wow. to listen to a woman will listen <laughs> to the man. But I think it's clear that as all of us, right, start the Mississippi River running, yeah. Uh, and we speak about our doctrine, and we speak about it openly. We, you know, as we do that, and as we're raising sons and daughters for whom this is totally natural, the co-presidency is totally natural, yeah. makes perfect sense, then I think Zion will come again. Yeah, I love that image of yeah. just the waters, you mm -hmm. know, refreshing waters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how do you explain patriarchy to your daughters? Oh, I, I say, look, honey, let's explain it like President Ezra Taft Benson is. He said, you know why it's called the patriarchal order of the priesthood? is because in the old days, the priesthood was passed down from father to son to grandson. Mm -hmm. So the priesthood line, right, is, is always, was in the past, mm -hmm. right, always a line of patrilineality, right? Your father... Uh, ordained you and his father ordained him and so forth mm. right and that's the reason it's called that it is not because men rule over women in here or in the eternities right mm. that's just false tradition yeah it's completely false so mm. I, I feel like <clears throat> my understanding of of patriarchy up till now I, I've always looked at patriarchy as the the reason for any what I perceive as inequality in the church with, with leadership or, or just decision-making power, it feels like patriarchy is the answer. So, so do you think that that's something that can be changed in the church? If, if, if patriarchal order is what matters, this like passing the priesthood from father to son, and th then what about the leadership in the church? How, how, does that, how is that intertwined with, with what we understand about patriarchy and and what does that mean for us? Well, I'd like to women? set patriarchy aside because, to be honest with you, I, I just don't believe that th that heaven is run as a patriarchy. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I just don't mean it. <laughs> and uh, our homes, or at least my home, is not run as a patriarchy. I hope your homes are not run as a patriarchy. I'm, in fact, as conservative a, a leader as President James E. Faust said mm -hmm. that, you know. Uh, patriarchy and matriarchy, right, rule together in the home, mm -hmm. right? In a sense, there's a patriarchal representative and there's a matriarchal representative in the home. So I hope your marriages are based on that, that kind of equality, yeah. right? Um, equal respect, equal love, equal deference, equal power, mm -hmm. right? Equal yeah. responsibility, all of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want to set that aside and say, you know, what, I, what I'd like to understand is how we can more fully instantiate that co-presidency that we know is divine. Yeah. We can do yeah. it in our homes. Mm -hmm. Is there some reason that we cannot bring that divine co-presidency more into the church? Yeah. So Nylon McBain and I, a few years ago, um, on Square Two, we did a, a, a survey about the naming of women's positions in the church. <laughs> oh, and of wow. course, I think, as you know, probably the worst example is um, mission president, president. and oh. mission president's <laughs> wife. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. yeah. It's the worst. I was actually just in, I don't even know if I should name it, but I was somewhere and I met the mission president and I said, oh, you must be the mission president's wife. And I gave her a hug and I said, I hate that I just called you that. <laughs> I hate that. And she said, oh, I'm just the mission president. I just say, we're the mission president. <laughs> wow. That's, that's right. Amazing. There you go. That's so great. They help. For example, in the young women's theme, the first mm -hmm. line is what? We are daughters of our Heavenly Father. And Who loves us as we love Him. Shouldn't it be we're daughters yeah. of our Heavenly Parents? Yes. Who love us as we love them? 
Yeah. What a tiny little tweak, and yet mm-hmm. look at what it would open up for our young women. Yes. Yeah. Right. It seems cosmetic, but it would be so. It would be such a huge shift. Huge, huge, huge shift. shift. Yeah. 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 Right. Huge shift. So I think a, a, a deeper understanding. We know that. I, I, I'm assuming that the marriages of our apostles and our first presidency are all good marriages. In that case, mm-hmm. we need to bring more of that unity, that co-presidency into mm-hmm. the church. Now, I'm not saying that there is no mm-hmm. room for a distinctive male-only role. Yeah, and I think right? it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay yeah. to have that. But yeah. we've got to see that whole picture. Women. Two trees, two people, mm-hmm. two she stewardships, stewardship. two gifts given, yeah. two gifts received, two hearkenings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. When you yeah, see that, the then the sting kind of goes away, yeah. Yeah. Right? It does and that out. co-presidency comes back into view, and that's yeah. what we need to heal. Mm-hmm. We have to need, we have to have that. Yeah, and I appreciate yeah. like seeing the spiritual evolution that's mm-hmm. come about from mm-hmm. you know when we were talking about 1880, mm-hmm. the difference of now. I mean, what a gift Huge. that we get to be raising our daughters in 2019. Our, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. when I was here at BYU, oh even when at Texas A&M. I kind of had this side cottage industry. You know, I wasn't paid or anything, but I would get these phone calls from people I didn't even know, and they'd be like, my daughter's taking out her endowments next week. Can you talk to her before that? <laughs> oh. right? Or I'd get yeah. the worst phone call. My daughter went to the temple last oh. week for the first time. Can you talk to her? She wow. wants to leave the church. Wow. Right. So I'm I'm mm-hmm. giving all of these talks about yeah. no, you can't see it this way, yeah. you know, two yeah. trees, the whole nine yards. I don't have to give that talk mm-hmm. ever again. Amen. Mm-hmm. Ever yeah. again. You, I am so what a thrilled. Gift. I know. What a huge step forward. But yeah. what's important is it was true all along. Yeah. All right? Yeah. The changes to the temple ceremony that you see right now, yeah. they were not, they're not just true yeah. in 2019. Yeah. They were true in 2000. Mm-hmm. They were true in 1950. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So we're just getting closer to the truth and throwing away error. Yeah. And it maybe would have happened a little bit faster if women were more engaged. Mm. Right? Yeah. If we were the ones kind of asking the questions mm-hmm. that they are yeah. risking agitating mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. do you think mm-hmm. that that is our role to be agitating and uh, i don't what, use the word agitate <laughs> wait okay what's a, what's a little bit less than agitating but you know how do you wait for further light and knowledge I, I i i kind of don't like that phrase because it to me implies just like be quiet and just sit and wait and they'll tell you when it's allowed or you know i feel like that leaves me like very powerless <laughs> well it's kind of like you can't pray to heavenly mother you know, like you're kind of doing it in a roundabout way, mm-hmm. but why can't we mm-hmm. yeah, talk with her? Mm-hmm. You know? Well, I think that's a good question. And, I've, and mm-hmm. I've resolved it to myself that there is a Godhead, that yeah. fallen world Godheads, you know, mm-hmm. are probably all male. And that mm-hmm. you have to go through them to get to Heavenly Mother. But that's mm-hmm. simply my, my feeling. But okay. I, I have absolutely felt her, her touch. I have yeah. felt her directly communicate with me. Yeah. There may be um, certain things about which women have greater knowledge. I think certainly a theology of the body would be one of those. Since women preside over the ordinances of embodiment, the, the priestesshood ordinances of embodiment, there may be certain things that men may be better able to do in the kingdom of God than we are. So I'm certainly not a person who believes that equality is identity. I've never mm-hmm. been one of those people who believes that. But I do believe that men and women stand before each other and before God, our heavenly parents, as equals. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that the power of women is not one whit less than the power of men, even though their power may be displayed uh, and used uh, differently. And, and what are you referring to specifically with the women presiding over the embodiment? embodiment? What did you say exactly? Are you talking about giving birth? Well, we know that the the word ordinance means Mm -hmm. uh, a physical act with deep spiritual Mm. meaning. Okay. So certainly pregnancy, childbirth, lactation are all ordinances of the gospel. They cannot be otherwise. They are clearly the priestesshood ordinances presided over by women. 
Um, so I, I think, you know, at some point I hope that we recognize this. We often think that our priestesshood is for some future time period. Mm. That's ridiculous. Mm. You know, we do the work of our Heavenly Mother, the High Priestess, right here on this earth. Wow. With my own daughters, I've actually tried to make it tangible because you know how, how much children love things that are tangible mm -hmm. but actually I've made my daughters necklaces that take them on the complete journey of womanhood all the way from unorganized spirit to goddess mm -hmm. and every last wow. stage in between so wow. we go over those once a year on their birthday and they have cards that show what, what every single bead is and what it means in their life. Wow. And uh, in fact, when I said, I want to take one of your necklaces down, my daughter said, okay, let me remember where I am. I'm right there, right, Mom? Um, and what's that? What's this already <laughs> and that is after they have uh, had the door of their body opened by Heavenly Mother. This is the key that opens their, the, the door to heaven through their oh. body. So that is their, let me see, that. I think that's their disciple bead. Yes, wow. their apprentice bead. Oh, wow. Their apprentice bead. Oh my gosh, what? And where did idea. you discover this? Oh, I made it up. This just came to you? <laughs> yeah, she that's what we have own to do. <laughs> you know, our, our own so language, awesome. right? This is a creating a language whereby we can talk about it. I said, now where am I? And they're like, we're, you're right here. Your key has been returned to Heavenly Mother. You're, mm -hmm. you, you don't menstruate anymore. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, now you're lapis mm -hmm. lazuli. We can talk about, we can talk about wow. the whole thing. I love that. And then menstruation isn't something to be ashamed of. Or no. scary. No. Or scary. No. Oh. And yeah. we have to invest it with huge, deep meaning because it is deeply meaningful. Yes, yeah. it is. And, uh, and I think we feel that as women. We feel that mm -hmm. it's deeply meaningful. Mm -hmm. And yet yeah. the language isn't there to express it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we feel that, right? And so I love that you've created this language. Oh, we had a menstruation party for all of my daughters whenever really? they got their, their, <laughs> yeah. their uh, period. We had a period party and I did not yeah. invite their friends. <laughs> I invited all the women in the ward whom they admired and loved. Oh, and I said, gosh. I don't want you to bring a gift that you have bought with any money whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You bring a gift that is symbolic to you of why wow. it is wonderful to be a woman and have a woman's body. Totally. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. You're so great. And so, of course, we had red velvet cake. <laughs> <laughs> we sang great songs by the folk group Labana about oh, yeah. ancient mother. And, uh, we just had a wonderful time. Wow. Um, but we have to do something different than we've done in the past, or mm -hmm. our daughters are going to end up just like us, uh -huh. aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why is the theology of embodiment such a feminist issue? I want you to see embodiment for what it is. It is a joining of things that belong together in a happy state. So we know spirit and body belong together and have a fullness of joy. And notice how integral women's power is to that joining. But also think about other joinings that are so important. Man to woman, all right? Woman to child, love and sex. Right? Think of all the things that women would seek to join together. Okay. Now, I want you to consider that a, a lot of what women have suffered from and the attacks that Satan makes, I think, is to alienate. All right? Mm -hmm. Break apart love and sex. Break mm -hmm. apart men and women. And now, break apart spirit and body. Yeah. So what does that look like for us? Like, how do we how do we show joining, you know, and, and show that, that that that's something we're, we value in our church and, and individually? How do we honor that? Oh, you honor it in every single way. All right, think about a woman's heart, all right? Does she really want to have sex with somebody that's not committed to her? Mm. All right, we hold the line on that, all right? How about even giving birth, all right? If, if your body is capable of giving birth, should you give birth yourself mm -hmm. and not hire a poor surrogate, right, who is literally poorer than you and needs the money, right, and mm -hmm. secondarily is going to bond with that child? Would you exploit a woman in that way? No. Mm -hmm. All right, there are things that even we do as women 
that can alienate women from their own bodies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Valerie Hudson, and um, we'll link to your two trees talk from FAIR mm-hmm. and anything else that we may have referenced without explaining here. You so. bet.